Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode of Sticky Note Marketing. I am your host, Mary Zarnecki. If you have not joined us here before or we have not met previously, I am a marketing strategist, speaker, and consultant, and I am super excited to share with you this topic that I've got coming today. So today is part two of three of a little three-part series that I am creating based on some requests from people in my community. So a lot of folks in my community shared with me the fact that this year, 2020, they're focused on growing their email list because they hear all the time the money's in the list. Now, I agree that yes, the money can be in your list. But the reason I'm creating this series is because we need to think about very specific things. Hey, Kelly, thanks for joining live. So if you are watching us live, I welcome you. Drop a little note below and let me know where you're listening from. If you are catching us on the replay, let me know as well. So today, like I said, is part two of three. Last week, I talked about how to create a lead magnet, an opt-in, an informational offer to get the right people on your email list. Because here's the thing, the money's only in the list if you get the right people on your list. It's not always just about the size of your list, but about the quality of your list. So if you didn't catch that episode, feel free to uh, watch the replay on that one. So if you're already doing what I shared with you in that and implementing the steps and strategies I shared to get the right people onto your list. The next question you may bump into is, okay, Mary, what happens now that I have them on my list? What the heck do I say to them in order to turn these new subscribers into actual buyers? So like I say on all of my episodes, I am going to give you some actual tips. So grab your sticky notes, grab your little pieces of paper, your journals. That's why I call this sticky note marketing because I want to give you actual tips that you can actually implement in your business this week to see results. So just enough to fit on a sticky note. So today we're going to talk about three key things you need to be doing to get those new subscribers to turn into actual buyers. Because what we don't want to be doing is paying MailChimp or ConvertKit or Infusionsoft or whatever you're using for your email service provider for people to just hang on on your list. There are some people on those lists that are going to turn eventually into buyers, but how do we move them along that customer journey? That's what we're going to unpack today. So first and foremost, the first thing you need to do when someone joins your list is obviously deliver, right? right? So somehow they got on your list. Maybe it was a PDF, a checklist, a cheat, le- cheat, a freebie, something that you gave them that was an informational offer like we talked about in last week's episode. So hopefully you've designed it in the way that I gave you some tips around last week, that it's actionable, it's easy to consume, but they basically need that delivered to them. So that's the first thing you need to do. When someone gets on your list, give them a delightful experience for that delivery. Make sure that 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 delivery email is going out automatically, that they're getting what they asked for, that they're getting the results that you promised them. So make sure that that delivery is exceptional and delightful. So that's number one, but that's kind of intuitive, right? So now what are the other pieces that we need to put into that email series, that kind of nurture experience to move them from just subscribers to actual buyers. So the second thing you want to do is actually make them feel comfortable that you weren't just trying to bait and switch them, that basically you weren't just kind of giving them a freebie and now they're on this list and that the rest of the content isn't going to be relevant for them. They want to feel confident that they made the right decision to get onto your email list, to be in your world now. So the best way to do that is to follow up with some additional information that is going to continue to move them down that journey of transformation, right? So the idea is that to work with you in a paid capacity is going to get them full transformation. So if you're a health coach, maybe it's transforming into a vegan lifestyle. Maybe if you're a fitness coach, it's losing uh, that baby weight. If you are a mindset coach, maybe it's unblocking themselves. If you're a virtual assistant, maybe it's finally deciding that yes, they are time Uh, has come to hire a team member. So whatever it is, full transformation is going to only come when they pay to work with you. So that freebie and then the second gift that we're going to give them as part of their welcome series are going to get them small steps along that journey, right? They're going to also help to pre-qualify the people that are on your list to be ready to work with you in a paid capacity. So don't think about these necessarily as giving away the farm or giving away all your secrets. These are things that qualify qualify people and get them ready to work with you in a paid capacity. So these are things that make them more qualified to work with you. 
So for example, if you are offering virtual assistant services or you're offering digital marketing services, there are certain things that you need to have people understand, do, believe, or have in place to be ready to pay you to work with you. So for example, they need to understand, okay, if I'm thinking about hiring a virtual assistant, what are some of the things in my life that I need to hire out? Making that list of what they could resource, what they could offload onto off of their plate. Those are kind of things that aren't necessarily giving away the farm, but are going to help pre-qualify them for working with you in a paid capacity. So think about that. So number one, we're delivering what they specifically asked for, what you specifically promised them to get on the list. Number two, we're following that up with another little piece that's going to continue to make them feel confident that they are in the right place, that you are an expert, that you are an authority in your space, that you have content, services, and ideas that are going to help continue them on that journey of transformation. So kind of like a second piece of content that can help move them along. The third thing that you want to do is then build your authority. So you want to build your authority in a couple different ways. You can share your origin story, share what you're about, but the key is you want to tell the story of how you came to be, why you serve people just like them to make sure that they're in the right place, right? You're qualifying them as you're going through this relationship. And they are very clear in understanding that you help people achieve outcomes like the outcomes that they want to achieve for themselves. So you can do that in a couple different ways. You could do another email which shares your origin story. If you are helping people like you were maybe six months ago, a year ago, two years ago, like you're a fitness coach and you're helping people now with the methodology that you use to lose weight, then you can tell your story, your origin story, because you are your client. So if you want to do that, you can do that in one of those storytelling emails. Another way to do it, and you can even do both of these, you could do a storytelling email and then follow it up with another email that would be a more of a testimonial or case study. So you can actually highlight the story, you can blind it or actually use their name or video testimonial or quotes, but basically showcase the results of a client or customer that you have helped that exemplifies the kind of outcomes that you produce for your clients and services. So that authority building is something that's going to nurture those people from being cold new subscribers into interested potential prospects and then ultimately into buyers because the people who are coming into your list aren't necessarily going to be what we call now buyers, right? They might need some nurturing. They might need to be uh, made to feel confident that they're in the right place, that you're the person that needs to serve them. So those are the key three elements that you want to bake into that email series that's going to be delivered to people once they get on your list. Number one, deliver the thing you promised. (laughs) Number two, give them an additional piece of content, tool, tip, or information that's going to move them along and also pre-qualify them to get ready to work with you. And then third, make sure that you're building that authority. Share your origin story, share your mission, share what you're about in a way that's meaningful to them, and also highlight a case study or testimonial of how you've helped someone with your program and service achieve the outcomes that they're looking to achieve. So obviously the key then is going to be to make the offers. So the extra bonus tip is once you've put these three things in place, people are primed and ready. So don't be afraid to make offers to your list. Make different kinds of offers. Introduce them to the idea to jump on a call with you to see if it's right to work together. Introduce them to maybe your initial bottom tier, lower tier offers, lower priced offers, or even introduce them to your signature system, higher ticket offers. Your list is there basically to be served by you. So long as you are serving them with good quality content, don't be afraid to let them know how they can work with you on a deeper level in a paid capacity. So if this resonated with you and you want to find out more about how to get more people on this list, I also dropped above my freebie, my free guide and action guide about how to create irresistible lead magnets and informational offers to get the right people onto your email list. Because it's not about just getting anyone on your list, it's getting the right people on your list. So grab that wall, it's still available. And I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions about any of the topics I talked about today, feel free to drop a comment below and I will jump back in here and answer those questions. I'd also love to continue the conversation with you over in my Facebook group. So I'm going to drop a link to that below and I will see you on the next episode of Sticky Net Marketing where we're going to tackle part three, which is going to be now that you have people getting on your list, now that you're nurturing them on the list, how do you get more traffic? Basically, how do you broaden your visibility and reach to get beyond 
the, the initial group of people that you're getting on your list so that you can grow that email list and basically achieve your goals for 2020. So see you guys on the next episode.